Um, yeah, kind of a weird spot to split the part, but I had to do it. This uh, is going to go on for a little while, I reckon. So, now we're just seeing where, uh, you know, what uh, what video would be complete without a, a long-winded dokusu scene, you know. So, that's what we're doing here. Um, God, that guy looks German, doesn't he? All of the uh, dokutsu soldiers look very German. So, uh, there's that. I don't know if that that's all, you know, I don't... As I was just pointed out, I don't have anything else to say about it. Anyway, uh, this scene is basically about Raytia and her being overworked. It's kind of just to make you feel sympathetic for her, or t sympathy toward her. Uh, she's overworked, she's got a lot going on, she's really stressed out, and she's getting slam dunked by the universe, actually. So, uh, you know, I guess I can skip it because I already explained what it was. Though I... Uh, some stuff happens in this scene related to research and development and them spending money. Uh, I'm wondering if that happens if you give her reinforcement, or not reinforcements, aid. Uh, I've always given Doku to aid in the past. I've never skipped that. This is the first playthrough where I failed to give them aid um, because I found out that it does nothing via the wiki. But it might give that scene. Um, giving them aid delays their fall by three turns or something like that, which doesn't matter. It doesn't really matter. Uh, because the route I'm going for basically has Dokutsu get defeated. That's the point. Um, so that's, that's it. All I have to say there, um, this scene, now more Dokutsu, is just them uh, losing ground, I guess, in Moscow, ultimately. They're losing land, they can't hold stuff. I think they needed reinforcements, so I'll skip this as well. Um... Because, you know, it's it's like the herald of things to come, which I might have mentioned before. I forgot about this. Um, Admiral Doolittle, this is completely meaningless. I'll skip it as well. She uh, shows up once in a while to attack Rabul. She... I think you can capture her. That's it. Um, hmm. Yeah, that's fine. I think you can capture her later on. I don't really know. I, I don't care that much. She's not... She, she, she has a generic picture as well. Like, she's not... She's not important, so. Um, I hope I deployed, right? I don't think this is correct. I I could have done better. Anyway, this guy's dead. He's, he's the troublesome one. If you notice, his Tekko is 540, which is higher than the other girl's laser, so that's why it's a come out. Um, which uh, I think you can actually see rather well on YouTube. This uh, The video for this game comes out quite well. I think. So, I'm pretty pleased with that if I may say that. Uh, I am happy with how this records, I'm happy with how it uploads, I'm happy with how it gets formatted. There's not much better that I could do with it, to be completely honest. So, that's all there. Um, and uh, this is all here. She looks really cute. I like the way she looks. It's the American uniform, you know. Um, don't know what this is, so let me investigate. Uh, I think this is about losing more colonies. They just lose more land, and they... Well, it's not land in this game. It's star systems in this game. And they lose more and more and more. They're not winning, as you can see. Um, you know. After the loss of Indo-Curry, Ares suffered a serious economic blow. Well, Indo-Curry was worth a lot of money, but it wasn't worth as much money as some of the territories I had taken beforehand, if you noticed that. Um... Yeah. Don't have anything to say there. Um, I don't really have much to say about India either. From this time period, I don't know... I don't know India's involvement in World War II at all. To be perfectly honest with you, I have no idea what their involvement was. Um, I mean, I'm sure they fought in it to some degree. There weren't very many countries that didn't. Uh, yeah, so... I mean, I, I, it's something that I have to look up more to give you any input on, or anything. So, that's all I have to say there. Uh, now it's just Sarah's mom being a bitch and being like, well, my reign was hard too, you know. And uh, Sarah's like, well, fuck you, mom. Why don't you keep being queen? Why do I have to do this shit? And she's like, but, you know, it's because you're, you know, you're royal. So, you don't have a choice in life. So, we'll skip that now, because I don't have anything else to say here. Um... Uh, now that it's back on Nelson, I'll let it go. I don't know if I can get him, like I said. I might get him in the next territory. I might have missed my chance because I didn't annihilate him. 
It's whatever. He's a very stable unit. If I could cat like if I could give him a term, it would be a stable unit. He's reliable all the time. Like uh like Keiko. She's very reliable. You have her do a specific thing the rest of the game, good to go. That's it. You know, it's not like Togo where you can customize and make him super god tier. You know, it's not like uh Femu where it's like, well, she's situational. Nelson is just always reliable in his own thing. I don't remember there being a lot of leeway with how you can customize him. And uh that's all I have to say about him. I mean, that's one thing that the game did right. You know, you can customize certain admirals in certain ways. Sure, they, you know, have a certain bonus, usually. Otherwise, what the hell's the point? But, I mean, you can generally customize each... each admiral well enough. Obviously, like, Raytia, she has just... she has no specific bonuses. She just has a bunch of really all-around stuff. So she has, ultimately, more customization options than people like Nelson. But... Because I think Nelson is laser-based. I don't really know. I'm going to skip this, too. So, uh, and UHOS, wow, it's just covering all bases here, so, I guess this is fine, um, I don't know how much longer the UHOS does stuff like this before they become relevant, like, to me, I, uh, I had the non-aggression pact already, so, it's whatever, you know, I want to make Catherine pay, though, I wish she wasn't a kid. She's a kid, though. So it's tougher. It, uh... Well, I mean, that goes over her story stuff later on, too. I don't remember it all. It's just weird. It's like a weird... Completely unrealistic situation, which is... I shouldn't even use that term in this game. But, I mean, even... I, I mean, even in the realm of star systems and all that shit, it's completely unrealistic, so... Her rise to power is redonk so to speak, um, but that's fine, that, that's, I have no problem with that, it's just silly. Uh, more on that later, um, the sharest shit comes into Japan soon, I think, uh, that might, actually, that might just be in your war with them, I don't recall, anyway, I'll tell you how to handle that, because it caught me off guard the first time, and I, I know that I've said that already, but, it goes with, you know, it's worth say, it's worth saying again, it's a huge pain in the ass. Um, uh, I don't know what this is. Transmission, encrypted, okay. This is the thing I said I wasn't going to pursue. I'm just going to skip it because I already said that I'm not going to fuck with it. It's the uh, distress beacon coming from Eris territory. Uh, I don't, I'm not even sure which star system it is that it, it pokes out of. Um... Anyway, it, you know, I already talked about it in the other part in detail about how I won't I won't necessarily ignore it. I mean, if I happen to progress in that direction, you know, through my own whatever, then it's fine. I'll do it. I've never done it before. I'm not opposed to doing it. I'm just opposed to forcing myself there. You know what I mean? So, by the way, I loved Hisashige or uh, the girl. I don't, I keep mixing them up. I know they're not the same person, but... Whatever. I like the laugh. Whosoever it was. Whoever's it was. Whosoever's laugh that was. Uh, this is kind of a big scene. Um, it changes some stuff, and I'm not sure what triggers it. Uh, I have no idea what triggers this scene. Um, it might just be progress on the world map. It might be turn-based. Anyway, you get fighters, so I guess I'll let this scene go because of that. Um... You get fighters, that's really it. Uh, it upgrades Shibigami's fleet to fighters, I think, and then he becomes a really good carrier fighter fleet. If I'm not mistaken, I might be wrong about this. And uh, I should upgrade um, Ozawa Matsuri's bonus. To, uh, now she's good with fighters, too, along with her speed or something like that. I'll review that on the world map. In any case, uh, this is a big scene in the game, and, um, I mean, in World War II, Japan had a decent, uh, what is it, Air Force. They had a decent Air Force. Um, flat chest swelled with pride. Ooh. Ooh. Um, those of you new here, DFC is the best. Uh, just saying. I mean, I've grown up to, like... 
things other than DFC, but DFC is still my favorite, so I'll put that out there. Um, anyway, this, this girl has probably one of my favorite designs, you know, in that way, in the game. What was I talking about? Oh yeah, Japan's Air Force in World War II was good. Uh, everyone knows about kamikaze pilots, and of course that's got to come up when you're talking about the Japanese Air Force in World War II, because that was shocking for Americans. I mean, I don't think suicide attacks were rare. Like, in, in war, I'm sure they're a pretty common occurrence, I mean, on the larger scale. Like, you know, not every country is going to utilize suicide attacks, but I'm pretty sure in every single conflict that's ever happened on a global scale, it's existed in some way. Uh, you know, it's whatever. And uh, I'll, I'll give my opinion on that too. Um, but the Japanese era, uh, the fighters were called Zero. Uh, they were they were Zero, Zero, Zero fighters, and they uh, were pretty good. They were pretty damn good for World War II. I think they were one of the the better designed fighters of World War II. And uh, I'm not positive. I'm pretty sure American fighters outclassed them towards the end of the war. But I'm not positive about that. I think the Japanese had a pretty good uh, advantage in the air for a while. Um, anyway, they, uh... That's it. <laughs> uh, I think it was in the Atlantic, or Pacific. Why would I mix them up? In the Pacific, where, you know, World War II took place in the Pacific between Japan and America. I have to reiterate it now because I misspoke. Um, it decided for America that naval battles were just as much decided by air support as they were naval support. So they started having to work harder on their air support because Japan outclassed them at the beginning of the war. I think that's how it went. Um, and about the suicide bombers, it wasn't really, uh, you know, like, to draw a comparison real quick here, I'm going to talk about Shibigami's design and why I don't like it shortly. Spoilers. Um, but to talk about that, like, uh, Modern day suicide bombing is painted in a very bad light because it's a very bad thing. You know, people will go in and kill themselves and take out a bunch of civilians and it's a really horrible thing. Like, you know, in, in a lot of ways they're doing it for a, a horrible, horrible reason. They're terribly misguided individuals and they deserve some pity. And uh, they're killing a bunch of people who don't deserve to be killed. It's, it's, just, it's very sad on all ends, to be completely honest. Um, you know, I, I feel bad for the person blowing themselves up, I feel bad for the people getting blown up, and I feel bad for the people who have to clean up the mess. So, that's out there. But, what the Japanese did during World War II were not, it's not the same thing. Like, I don't feel bad for the pilots who did that, and I don't feel bad for the soldiers who were killed by that. I mean, that's coming from a war-like situation. Um, like when two combatants fight each other and they know that they can die it's not as sad when one of them dies you know it's still it still sucks don't get me wrong but if two people are fighting each other and they know that death is a thing that can happen it's whatever it's an accepted outcome and it's fine so when some guy is flying a plane and he's out of ammunition and he has to inflict as much damage as possible that is his goal in a war situation and he suicide bombs into a boat and takes out a bunch of people, that's kind of admirable. Uh, to be completely honest, he's dying for a greater cause, he's doing what he needed to do, and uh, that's it, you know? And uh, a lot of people think that it was just to throw their lives away, and in some situations, I don't think the Japanese ordered kamikaze attacks correctly. It wasn't something that had to be done in a lot of situations. But there were situations in World War II when they didn't have a choice. Um, like, they were done. They couldn't retreat necessarily because they were almost out of fuel, and what else are they going to do, you know? Um, and I mean, for Americans especially, that's... Suicide bombing in all clauses is looked very badly upon, like... And as it should be in modern day, but... Again, I'm talking about a different time with different circumstances, and it wasn't necessarily as bad. Uh, in any case, enough of that. Uh, let's talk about furries. Um, Shibigami. I don't like his design. I have nothing against furries. Furries are fine. Um, should I talk about fapping to Sonic Team characters? Not the male ones, mind you. I'm not a gay furry. Um, I'm not a furry at all. I thought I'd mention it. Furries are fine. I don't give a shit. Fuck people who hate on furries because they're furries, you know? I mean, the furry fan base is generally horrible. So, I, I'll put that out there. They... You know... 
I've seen some terrible things from the furry fan base, but as far as people liking that goes, it's completely whatever. Uh, I don't give a shit. And you shouldn't either, by the way. When some guy starts running around with, you know, a blue mohawk with his arms behind his back, like Sonic, then we might have an issue, but, you know, aside from that, it's whatever. Um, and I mention that because I don't, I, I don't like Shibigami's design, not because he's a furry thing, not because he's an anthropomorphic dog, but because I don't like anthropomorphic dogs. I don't think they look cool. Like, uh, wouldn't he be a cooler character if he was a dog? Like, if he was a dog commanding a space fleet? I think that would be cooler. Just putting it out there. I mean, that's my opinion. But I think that would be cooler. Um, you know, I mean, he's a, he's a god. Did he choose that stupid form? Did he choose to be retarded looking? Or did he, you know, or was it just like he was born that way? I would like to know. If he's immortal and he blows up in space... And it, what does his body just re -knit? It's stuff like that that I kind of wonder about. Um, I don't think it clarifies in this game. It, it, it says that he's immortal, but is he like undamageable? Do bullets bounce off of him? Or does he get blown to pieces and then come back at a shrine? You know, does his spirit energy reform his body at a shrine? I don't know. What, am I, what the fuck am I talking about? Anyway, well, you know, I haven't had that much to do in this part, so. <laughs> uh, this scene here is another good one. I think it's one of the last ones with Ermi. Um, she's not talking to Raytia, you may have noticed that. I think she's talking about coming back home soon because uh, Dokutsu's about to get his shit kicked in. And when that happens, hopefully you've done all of uh, Ermi's events. Because if you haven't, you lose her at that point. If you have done all of her events, Togo has an option to go to Dokutsu with her and rescue Raytia, Gobles, uh, that's it and no one else comes with you. You have to go and liberate Rommel, you have to go and liberate Manstein, you have to go and liberate Mussolini, uh, all of that. I'm getting a little ahead of myself here because it's coming in the parts following, but I don't mind mentioning it now. Um, in any case, we won't be seeing any more weblogs with Raytia, so that's all there is there. Um, yeah, I guess I don't have anything else to say about this, so I'll go ahead and Move on. Kind of a long dialogue sequence, wasn't it? What is this? Fucking space pirates. They couldn't just leave it at that. Like, uh, I'm getting slimed with more stuff. Then I mentioned that I don't like this. <laughs> it's fine if... Mm, let me start over. It's a problem when I'm recording, which is a separate issue. People aren't intended to record this game, so it's not a valid issue. Though it's a problem for me personally. And, uh... It's a problem for people who don't necessarily have a lot of time, which also sounds stupid because it's like reading a book or whatever, you know. A VN is like reading a book, ultimately. And uh, if somebody needs to do something, like, say right now, I just had to leave. I had to go. I can't skip this because I'm missing content, but I can't save right now either. So I can just leave it running, I guess. That would be fine. It's not like it has high CPU usage or anything, but... I guess that's a stupid complaint. Huh. I mean, what situations are you obligated to shut off your computer? Like, power outages, which are, affect everyone the same way anyway. Whatever, I'm retarded. Uh, Imperial Navy Headquarters, what do we have here? Um, pirates, still talking about the pirates. Um, I think this means that they show up somewhere on my world map, and I can tackle them. If they, If I fail to attack them on the first time they show up, they reappear again. And I think where they spawn in your territory is random as well. Not positive on that, but I've not noticed a pattern for where they spawn, personally. Um, and, you know, annihilating Alwilda's fleet gets you Alwilda, and she's a good unit. Uh, I like having her. That's all I have to say about that. I think... I think I've used her as a defensive admiral before, and, and an offensive one, actually. I, I, don't, I don't recall. She has a good H scene. I do recall that. Uh, yeah. Don't have anything else to say about that. Until they show up, they're just talking about the supply lines being attacked, which is fine. Uh, sand. Oh, good. Sand ship's available. And all of my new technologies just kicked in. So I got a shitload of money from taking Indo Curry. And now I have a ton of new things to research. And, uh, well... See, now it's Elfield. It wasn't the same. So, 
I don't know if that's a different thing or if the name's different. Where is that? See, I'm not going to be able to reach it with my main fleet, and I think it has a pretty solid, like, group with it. I might send them in. Uh, in any case, I'll do it in the next part, so I'll see you there.